Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I think I'm pretty young to uh, be on stage. Firstly, I'd like to thank my brother. My brothers, my uncles, and my parents way back at home who has sponsored my tour to Malaysia. And uh, this paper is purely dedicated to Sheikh Imran Hussain because he is the one who taught me the subject of riba. Last year at the National Conference on Foreign Direct Investment, way back in India, I presented a paper on the topic, what will Walmart offer to the farmers? Walmart is trying to invest in India and the government is trying Walmart to bring into foreign direct investment in multi-brand retailing. So in that paper, I focused on the future of the farmers, the current situation and the future of farmers, but I never knew what is the background of the current distress. And I can only penetrate, I, I, was, on, I was able to penetrate the subject only through the lectures of Sheikh Imran Hussain. So I'm really thankful to him, alhamdulillah. So let's move on uh, to the paper, Riba and its impact on Indian agrarian crisis. Of all gifts to mankind, the fruits of agriculture have been an outstanding contribution of the Indus Valley civilization to the nation of India. In the 18th century, India was ranked among few developed nations solely because of the contribution of this sector. So this was the early history, the green history of Hindustan. That's why we call the Hind, because it's so beautiful, because of its natural resources. Then came the British imperialism and they forced the farmers to focus on cash crops rather than food crops. Thus commercialization of this industry reached its pinnacle in its true sense for the first time. Nevertheless, this commercialization did not occur with the free will of the, farmer, of the cultivators but was rather forced and artificial. Then independent India then moved on and established several policy reforms to regenerate the rich agricultural sector which was stagnated by the British Empire. The urgency to build a self-suffice nation was of highest importance to the policymakers. And uh, you can see those policymakers because of that. The growth rate during 1904 to 1944 was recorded to be less than 0.5 per annum, whereas it escalated to 2.7 during 1949 to 1983. Then the irony came. The Green Revolution was introduced to India in the early 70s, promising to eradicate hunger and malnutrition. And when we know, when we hear the term Green Revolution, we think about sustainable agriculture, but an organic agriculture, but it is not. Green Revolution meant introducing of GM seeds, the high yield seeds, and introduction of synthetic pesticides and herbicides. That is what, what was called Green Revolution. And that is the role of media that is being played in today's India. So we all think about the, the, the promised uh, organic agriculture, but that was not it. So what was the impact? The impact of Green Revolution, it was in, of course in ironical term. The usage of chemicals that threatened the endemic species of the local biodiversity because agriculture is not an artificial process, it is a natural and organic process. So because of these chemicals, we had the local biodiversity was threatened. The impact was even more where the socio-economic sphere of farmers was also affected with these policy reforms. You know why? Because the pesticides were out of reach of the local farmer. The high yield seeds were so expensive for the local farmers, so they have to, the, the creation of rural credit was introduced. And because of that, that was the initial starting point of riba based economy, which was introduced in the agrarian sector. So farmers were left discounted as a result of their indebtedness and degraded soil. This led to social unrest and dispute between the farming community and the state. National Crime Records Bureau recorded accidental deaths and suicides from 1967. It improved its classification of suicides only in 1995 by introducing suicidal deaths by profession. Farmer suicides recorded 8,295 8, contributing 17.62 percentage which was clearly the highest of all deaths by profession including unemployment and retirement put together. So that was 
the results in 1995 and uh, amazingly today in 2011 alone 14,027 farmers have committed suicide. That means in every 37th minute we are losing an Indian farmer from this world. So this objective of this paper to understand the magnitude of the ongoing agrarian crisis in India mainly focusing on the farmer suicides. Number two, to understand the comprehensive nature of riba in the light of Quran, to analyze the root cause of this issue and its many forms widespread in this sector. Because if we try to define riba according to the constitution of India, then we cannot penetrate. So that's why I said that the knowledge and wisdom of Sheikh Imran Hussein, I was able to penetrate uh, in a broader sense. We are Kurwan, uh, Kurwan's perspective of riba and uh, you can see the enormous results and also we can derive out solutions to fight out, fight the tide at micro level to help farmers empower their lives and the lives of their families. So I'm not going to go in detail of the Quranic perspective of riba as we have seen a lot of evidences on uh, fractional reserve banking and fiat money. But I can say that we can derive out certain perceptions regarding riba in Quran. Even though it appears that riba increases wealth at an individual level, we all regard that fixed deposit increases our wealth, there is no increase at the level of society or humanity as a whole. Number two, people have, it have been indoctrinated ideologically by accepting riba but condemning stealing another's property unlawfully. And Alhamdulillah, Professor Labani said both of them are equal. We, we condemn stealing another's property unlawfully but uh, we acknowledge riba. Allah has revealed these two crimes in the same verse. It's amazing. Riba does not increase the wealth, but to the contrary, it decreases by manifold. There will be rising trends in unemployment, shortage of food, inequality, stress and suicides, and killing and larceny, which, decrease the, which decreases the productivity of humanity. And this is the results in our plain eyes. It is so clear. It is so plain and clear, clear and we are still not trying to figure out how to find the tide. Riba is not a form of trade. Riba is exploitative in nature. The only salvation is to absolutely refrain from any form of riba. The fair transaction by the creditor is only to claim the capital amount. Rejecting the cardinal principle of capitalism where it believes capital generates more capital whereas Islam establishes that only labor can increase capital. So uh, today Shylock, I Shylock in the, in the books, you can see an ugly attire, but it has changed to more, more modern, sophisticated, clean shaven outfit or wearing a turban with a big, big beard. So it's, it's, it's a total deception. So these statements are necessary to understand the modern forms of riba as it has been disguised and marketed as business models or Islamic products, I say. So the riba and its various forms in the agricultural sector. What is, what, why, why the problem of Indian agrarian crisis in such magnitude? We have 250,000 farmers who have already committed suicide and counting, counting day by day. So the first form is, the, is, is very direct and, and plain, the usurious loans. The rural poor are affected most as they are unable to bear the effects of this debt-based economic system. Cost of living has changed to cost of surviving in Indian context. It's not cost of living anymore. They are unable to reinvest to their farming business as current expenditure is soaring to a record high and the savings are eroded because of inflation. Inflation not, not only increases the prices, but the, their savings also eroded. We don't really understand because we are, we are sitting in, in the AC hall and our savings are so high, so much, so big, so huge. So a, a small 1% reduction in our savings, it, it's just a mosquito bite. But the income of a farmer is just 20 rupees, Indian rupees a day, and say a 1% decrease will result in, in very much socio-economic pressure. So on top of this misery, they are falling to the traps of riba by taking these loans to invest in their business. These loans contribute immensely to the socio-economic pressure which drives them into debt trap to death trap. And some uh, statistics. National Sample Survey Organization of India 
confirmed that 89.35 million farmer households in India, among them 43.42 million, approximately 50%, were accounted to be indebted with these usurious direct loans. I am not talking about any other debt-based riba system. Only this system, they are directly among around 50% are affected. Out of the indebted farm household, more than 50% of them have taken these loans for the purpose of capital expenditure to the agricultural business. So meaning 50% of these expenditures uh, are capital or current, meaning the other 50% is in, in food and uh, med medical expenditure, which is not productive. So they cannot in any way repay the loans. So farmers are losing their dignity and social status as they get harassed continuously by the private moneylenders like the Shylock. And the, the later CNN reports confirmed that farmers are verbally and physically abused but helpless as they are unable to repair their debts. Debts have pushed them to extremes in the rural parts of Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. When, in, when the interest mounts up, farmers work as bonded laborers for a lifetime to repay their debts. You can say slaves. Sometimes they have to give whatever the moneylenders ask for, including their wives too. The episode ends in a suicide for the farmer, but not for the family. But then the problem even gets worsened as their children are forced to work to repay their father's debts, and the family's breadwinner is lost forever. Sometimes these consequences have led the entire family to commit suicide. But National Crime Records Bureau, the statistics is very authentic, but it's not accurate. Because it counts only the title of the uh, property. If a person is titled to the property, he is only considered as a farmer. The family is not considered as a farmer at all. So even these statistics say 14,027 farmers have committed suicide, it's even more because there is mass suicidal attempts. That's the bitter truth. Moneylenders are still preferred over banks in some rural areas because there is no pledge or security needed and the procedures are very simple and quick with these unofficial lenders. Even banks to abusers, the, the poor farmer, as the collection officer are no different uh, uh, from the moneylender. They are the same. They harass them too. So the second type of uh, riba based uh, system is the fiat money and the fractional reserve banking and i'm not going to speak on this because a lot of emphasis are given in the in the in the presentation but i like to quote by fahe who said the result of this money manipulation is threefold in the agricultural sector firstly the farmer becomes distressed by this loss and exhausts his land because he has to repay the loans back Every measure he takes towards the repayment of debt or earning more money exhausts his land even more. Secondly, this exhaustion will result in drought and erosion. If his neighbors are in the same condition, then desert creeps in these fertile lands. And we know that the production is getting lower and lower every year because of this. Thirdly, when all the farmers supply more to the market, the prices will fall and they will end up in even more misery. To fight the climate change in their lands and to make it, make it fertile again, they are forced to buy more expensive fertilizers, pesticides and resistant seeds with the help of local moneylenders and bankers which makes them with even more indebtedness. This vicious cycle continues until this predatory system has sucked the blood of the poor farmers. Number three, the leasing of land. Leasing of land means one party is guaranteed with a fixed amount, no matter what happens to the yield of another, yield of another, and the other takes the risk of loss for his entire hard work and labor. And uh, this hadith is recorded in Muslim, book number 10, hadith number 3715, where it prohibits the leasing of land, not the leasing of building, leasing of cultivation. Uh, agricultural land. Leasing of land was a common practice in Arabia but the Prophet ﷺ forbade such contracts. This contract resembles a usurious contract as it has eliminated the risk of loss. Abdullah ibn Umar said when Prophet ﷺ returned to the Jews of Khaybar, 
the dead palms of Khaybar and its lands on the condition that they should work upon them with their own wealth and give half of the yield to Prophet ﷺ. So meaning, only when the profits comes, you have to share. When the loss comes, you don't need to give anything. But in the case of rent, renting of lands, in the case of renting of, uh, renting of lands, even when in terms of loss or profit, the, the landowner is entitled for the liability. So number four is the speculation of in agriculture and we all know that is haram and it is taking place. And people argue that farmer suicides is, a, is an psychological phenomena rather than a sociological phenomena. But if that is so, there should be specific cases or restricted into certain gender or geographical area or a certain age. But amazingly, farmer suicides, it's all around India. So it is not restricted to any area. So it cannot be explained by any psychological phenomena. Yes, it contributes in, 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 such, in such some amount, but it is a socio-economic pressure. And because of the domestic discord arising from indebtedness, emerged as leading factors to suicides. And uh, what are the remedies? That is the most important. I'll just run through it because I'm out of time. The first thing is the channelizing the Islamic distributions of uh, wealth. The number one is Sadaka. Prophet ﷺ never retained anything from him. That is the eternal, they call it the Akhirat savings account. Everything he invested in the Akhirat, ba Akhirat bank account. We have Islamic bank only in Akhirat, not, not in the world. Because Allah gives it in, in infinite times. So uh, Prophet ﷺ said, if you give whatever, whatever it is excess to your basic needs, Give everything, and that's that's the life uh, that's the life he lived. So that is what sadaka. Give everything except the, what is excess than your basic needs. That's the first one, and the second one. If so, in that case, you won't even get your capital or get your returns back. Number two is karul al hasan, where you will get your capital back, but you won't get any returns to it. So that is very much encouraged. If you can't do that, yes, you can do. Uh, you can be a venture capitalist where you can be a partner with the farmer, you can give the capital and also you can share the profit. And even if you can't do that and you want to hold your money, then there is an option of giving you zakat. You can't hold money, with certain restrictions you can. So that is so. If the rich embraces these distribution channels to help the poor, then inshallah we can eradicate poverty. Human labor is underutilized because of this insufficient capital they have to work with. This will revolutionize the credit system in India which plays a vital role in energizing the farmers. And then you have the Baitul Mal and then, the, uh, then you have the sustainable agriculture because you know Indian models they all try to look up to the western model, western model of agriculture. In western countries they do not have the human power whereas the Indian economy, Indian agriculture the, the most important underutilized resource is their human power. So if they replace all these synthetic pesticides and herbicides into human labor, then we can produce organic farming and uh, that is uh, the solution that was considered in Uganda. Today we see the awesome oppression experienced by the downtrodden farmers it will be a, and it will be our turn tomorrow. Farmers are, are, are experiencing it now and if we continue to be silent, it is our turn, turn tomorrow. Reverting back to the pristine pure teachings of Islam is the only solution that lies ahead which will empower not only the farmers but will illuminate its light to its entire human race. Jazakallah khair.